the chapter is the human eye and the colorful world in this lecture we we'll learn about the human eye its working and some major defects of vision here we also learn about the refraction through prism and the phenomena of dispersion there are so many daily life phenomena which we observe in the night sky and nearby us such as twinkling of stars advanced sunrise and delayed sunset etc we are discussing here these are the examples of refraction through atmosphere let us discuss about the human eye what's a human eye human eye is the natural optical instrument and it's a very precious or a gift given by the nature to human beings this is the diagram of human eye and the various parts first one this is the cornea the front part of the human eye which is covered by a transparent membrane is called cornea the light enters in the eye through cornea aqueous humor the gap between the cornea and the lens is filled with a liquid called aqueous humor the next part is iris and pupil what is iris iris is a dark colored muscular diaphragm in which there is a small circular opening in its middle this iris regulates the amount of light entering in our eye with the help of pupil as we are in the very bright light the iris makes the size of pupil to contract so that the amount entering in our eye decreases when the light is very dim the iris makes the size of pupil expand so that the amount of light entering in our eye will increase next part is eye lens eye lens is a convex lens in nature which is made by proteinous jelly like material the lens is hard at the middle and becomes gradually softened at the edges the focal length of the eye lens can be changed by the action of ciliary muscles the space between the eye lens and retina is filled with a liquid called vitreous humor the retina is like a screen behind the eye lens on which the image is formed ciliary muscles these muscles are used to make the lens thick or thin so that the focal length of our eye lens will change optic nerve this is the part on retina where no sensitive muscles or tissues are there main function is to carry out the electrical signals to the mind to see any object this is the blind spot where no receptors are found if the image formed on the blind spot we can't see let us understand how the human eye works working of human eye this is our human eye an object is placed in front of human eye whenever the light falls on the object it reflects and moves towards the eye after passing through cornea and pupil the aqueous humor eye lens and vitreous humor refract the rays of light and a real an inverted highly diminished image is formed on the retina now the receptors on the retina activates and create the electrical signals 
which is sending to the mind through optic nerve and thus we get an erect and actual size image of the object. Let us discuss what is the far point and near point and least distance of distinct vision. First we take far point. As the far point for the human eye is the farthest point up to which a human eye can see the distant object very clearly. For a normal human eye, the far point lies at infinity. Next is near point. The point up to which a normal human eye can see the nearby objects very clearly. For the normal human eye, the near point is at 25 centimeter. For example, if you take your notebook very near to your eye, you can't see anything. That is, a near point is necessary. For normal human eye, it is again 25 centimeter. Third one is least distance of distinct vision. The minimum distance up to which a normal human eye can see the nearby objects very clearly. This distance is denoted by capital D and for normal human eye the least distance of distinct vision is at 25 centimeter. Students let us we take some question. Tell me what is the range of normal human eye? Ma'am, as you said, for a normal human eye, the range of vision is from infinity to 25 centimeter. Yeah, the farthest point is at infinity and the near point is at 25 centimeter. So, the range of vision for the normal human eye is infinity to 25 centimeter. I will give one more question. What happens to the image distance in the eye? when we increase the distance of an object from the eye. Ma'am, there is no change in the image distance because the distance between the eye lens and the retina is fixed by nature. Exactly. The distance between the eye lens and the retina in our eye is fixed. It can't be changed. So, if we increase the distance of object from the eye lens, there is no change in the distance of eye lens and retina that is distance of image. I will tell you one more question. Why nature give us two eyes instead of one? Because a human being has a horizontal field of view of about 150 degree with one open eye. With two open eyes, it is about 180 degree. Thus, the two eyes gives us the larger field of view. That is the boon of nature to give us two eyes rather than one. Now, I have one more interesting question. As we see in our surroundings, some animals have two eyes located on opposite sides of their head. What is its benefit? Its main benefit is the field of view becomes much large. So, the animals can see their enemies in a very large area and try to escape from this area. This is the main benefit. Accommodation power of eye. What does mean by accommodation? This is the ability of eye lens to change its focal length to see the distant objects as well as nearby objects clearly with the help of ciliary muscles that is known as accommodation power of the eye. In case of to see the nearby objects that is objects placed 
near about 25 centimeter. In this situation, the image formed at retina image I, the ciliary muscles contracts. Thus, the focal length of the lens becomes shortened so that the converging power is high. In the case when we focused on the distant object that is the object placed anywhere at infinity, the rays coming parallel from the distant object image formed at I in this situation ciliary muscles expand. Thus, the focal length of the lens become large and the small converging power. So, here we understand about the accommodated and unaccommodated conditions of eye. Children, I have a question. What do you mean by accommodated eye? Ma'am, when the eye lens is focused on the nearby objects, the eye is said to be accommodated? Yeah, I agree with you. But what happens in the case of eye? What are the conditions to be changed? Let me explain to you. In the case of accommodated eye, the eye lens becomes thick because the ciliary muscles contract and the focal length of the eye lens is minimum. And tell me what about the unaccommodated condition of eye? Ma'am, when the eye lens is focused on the distant objects, the eye lens is said to be unaccommodated. Yeah, and in the unaccommodated situation, the eye lens becomes thin due to the ciliary muscles expansion and the focal length of eye lens is maximum. Let us discuss the defect of vision myopia. Myopia, short sightedness or near sightedness. This is the eye, the parallel rays coming from infinity and they focus in front of retina not exactly on retina. So, in myopic eye, the image of distant object is formed in front of retina, not on retina. Why this happen? What is the cause? The far point for the normal human eye is at infinity, but in the case of myopic eye, the far point of myopic eye is less than infinity. This is the far point for myopic eye. Image formed on retina. What are the main causes? The main causes of myopia are decrease in the focal length of eye lens, which indicates the image not formed on retina it focused in front of retina and the other cause is the size of eyeball increases or the elongation of eyeball. This eyeball is not perfectly spherical. The size of eyeball will increase that is the distance between the lens and retina will increase and image formed again in front of retina. How this problem of myopia be cured? Correction of myopia. How we correct the defect of myopia? Here we take a concave lens of suitable focal length. So, that the parallel rays which are coming from infinity focused at f that is the virtual image formed at f. Now, these rays coming out f first diverge from this concave lens, then converge from our eye lens and final image formed at retina which is clearly visible. The concave lens placed in front of the eye lens forms a virtual image of distant object at far point f of myopic eye here. Now, the rays of the light appear to come from f and then focused by the eye lens to form a final image on retina. The image formed is eye. In a myopic eye, the image of a distant object is formed in front of retina, not exactly on retina. 
when the parallel rays which are coming from infinity the eye lens converts these rays and the image formed in front of retina to cure this defect of myopia a concave lens is placed in front of eye lens this concave lens forms a virtual and a point size image at the far point of myopic eye these are the parallel rays which after refraction diverges from this concave lens and appears to come from the far point or the focus of this concave lens now the rays refract by the eye part and the convex lens of eye lens and final image formed at retina here at the point i rays first diverges by this concave lens and then converges by this convex lens which is eye lens ma'am that means a student who is not able to see the blackboard sitting at the back of the classroom is myopic yes exactly let us take an example for myopia a far point of a myopic person is 80 cm in front of the eye what is the nature and the power of the lens required to correct the defect let me analyze the question here the far point of a myopic person is 80 cm it means the person can see the distant object clearly if the image of this distant object is formed at his far point that is u becomes minus infinity and the image of this distant object is formed at the far point of this myopic person that is at minus 80 cm negative sign in both u and v that is both of the distances are on the left side of the eye lens now we use the formula lens formula 1 upon f 1 upon v minus 1 upon u 1 upon f 1 upon v minus 80 minus 1 upon infinity that is minus 1 upon 80 focal length equals to minus 80 cm as we know that the myopia is corrected by using concave lens and here we can also verify because the focal length of the eye lens used is minus 80 this negative indicates that the lens used is concave in nature now the power that is 100 by f when f is in centimeter that is 100 by minus 80 minus 1.25 diopter thus we can say that the power of the lens required to correct the myopic defect of this person is minus 1.2 diopter and the nature of the lens is concave let us take an, another example a far point of a short sighted person is 100 cm what lens should he use to see the distant objects clearly here again the person is short sighted that is the defect is myopia a person can see the object clearly when the image of the distant object is formed at his far point that means u is minus infinity and v that is minus 100 that is image formed at his far point we use the lens formula 1 upon v minus 1 upon u 1 upon f equals to plug the values of v and u we get minus 1 by 100 f equals to minus 100 cm 
as we know that myopia can be corrected by using concave lens we can verify here f is negative in nature that means we use concave lens of focal length 100 cm to cure the defect of short sightedness of this person here we take one more example a person cannot see distinctly any object placed beyond 40 cm from his eye calculate the power of lens which will be enable him to see distant stars clearly let us analyze the question again the far point of person is 40 cm because he cannot able to see the objects placed beyond this that is u again infinity minus infinity and v is minus 40 cm if the image of the distant object formed at a distance of 40 cm from his eye he can able to see this now we using the lens formula 1 upon f 1 upon v minus 1 upon u 1 upon f equals to minus 1 upon 40 minus 1 upon infinity minus 1 upon 40 so the focal length of the lens is minus 40 centimeter power of lenses 100 by f when focal length measures in centimeter 100 upon minus 40 minus 2.5 diopter that is the person can see the distant objects clearly or the stars clearly if he uses a concave lens of power 2.5 diopter negative sign show that the lens is concave in nature the another defect of human eye is hypermetrophia also known as long sightedness or far sightedness in hypermetropia the final image formed behind the retina the image of nearby objects which is at 25 centimeter for the normal human eye cannot be visible on retina but behind the retina in case of hypermetropia the near point n is shifted to another near point n dash which is more than 25 centimeter so that image can be formed at retina why this happen what are the causes of hypermetrophia in a normal human eye the causes the first one is increase in the focal length of eye lens the focal length of this eye lens is not f it is shifted to f dash so that the image formed behind and the case 2 that is shortening of eyeball the size of this eyeball is not perfect sphere it becomes shortened from here that means the image formed behind the retina how can we cure the problem of hypermetrophia the correction of hypermetropia we use a convex lens of suitable focal length this is say nearby object n the rays coming out from n so that this convex lens form an image n dash of n which is the virtual image of this n that is n dash be the new object so that the rays first converges by this convex lens and then our eye lens and the final image formed at retina the convex lens forms a virtual image of the object lying at the normal near point n at the near point and dash of this eye now the rays of light appear to come from n dash and they focus by this lens and the eye lens to form the final image at retina hypermetrophia in this defect eye is not able to see the nearby objects clearly but can see the 
distant objects very clearly. For a hypermetrophic eye, it is difficult in reading and riding, but not in driving. In the case of hypermetropic eye, the image of nearby object here n is a near point and O be the nearby object n is called normal near point. The image of this object O is formed behind the retina. To cure the defect of hypermetrophia, we use a convex lens which is in front of eye lens and this convex lens forms a virtual image of object lying at near point at the point n dash. Now, n dash with a new object so that first the rays converge by this convex lens and then again converge by our eye lens and final image formed at retina so that we can see the nearby objects very clearly. Now, we take a numerical example for hypermetrophic eye. The near point of the hypermetrophic eye is 125 centimeter. What is the nature and the power of the lens required to correct this defect? As we know that the normal human eye, the near point is at minus 25 centimeter. In case of hypermetrophic eye, the person can see the objects clearly if the image of any nearby object is formed at his own near point. That means, V becomes minus 125. Minus is due to the these two distances is in the left side of the lens. Now, using the lens equation, plug the values here. Taking LCM as 125, F becomes 125 divided by 4 equals to 31.25 centimeter. Here we observe that the focal length is positive in nature and we also know that to correct the defect of hypermetrophia, we use convex lens. So, a person use convex lens of focal length 31.25 centimeter. Now, we calculate power. Thus, the defect of this person can be cured by using convex lens of power 3.2 diopter. Let us take one more example. A man who wears glasses of power 3 diopter must hold a newspaper at least 25 centimeter away to see the print clearly. How far away would the newspaper have to be if he took off the glasses and still wanted clear vision? The near point should be 25 centimeter. Power of lens used 3 diopter. The focal length of the lens used is 100 by 3 centimeter. Now, we use lens formula.
we calculated v as minus 1 meter. This means the near point of the person becomes minus 1 meter or 1 meter from the eye lens. That means, the person holds the newspaper at a distance of 1 meter from the eyes without using the glasses to continue the reading. Now, take one more example. A watch repairer has his near point at 20 centimeter. If he uses the magnifying glass of focal length 20 centimeter, what is the magnification that he gets? The near point of the watch repairer is that is v equals to minus 20 centimeter. Because there is a magnifying glass which is always convex in nature that is focal length is taken as to be positive 20 centimeter. To find out the magnification first we find out the value of u. By using the lens equation plug the values of f and v the value of u comes out as minus 10 centimeter. To find out the magnification m equals to v by u in case of lens, plug the values v is minus 20, u is minus 10. So, we get the magnification 2 that is the magnification that the watch repairer gets is 2 only. Now, we discuss about the astigmatism. What is astigmatism? Here, this is a eye, this is the human eye, this is cornea light entering inside eye through cornea and pupil. If we go interior structure, the light converts from lens and focus on retina, but the shape of eye is not perfect spherical, it becomes oval. So, that the light rays focus at different positions, not exactly on retina. People with astigmatism may also report frequent headaches or eye strains. This astigmatism is a very common disorder and it can occur with either near sightedness or foresightedness or both. Blurred or distorted vision caused by astigmatism can be improved by wearing glasses or contact lens of suitable focal lens. Now, we discuss the another defect of the eye that is cataract. In case of cataract, the eye lens becomes cloudy. It is not exactly or purely transparent. Due to the growing of age, there is some layer deposited on the lens or the transparency goes on decreasing such that as the rays of light coming they focus on the retina, but in the case when the lens become cloudy growing age when the rays of light coming the amount or the intensity of light goes on decreasing due to this transparency decreases and we do not get any clear image on the retina. This is called as cataract problem. 
cataract can be cured by a simple surgical method in the medical sciences. Let us discuss one more defect of the human eye that is known as presbyphia. What exactly the presbyphia is? Presbyphia is the inability to focus on objects up to close. In case of normal human eye, the light enters through iris and pupil and the interior of the eye it focus on retina so be that the clear image. But in case of presbyphia these are the electrical signals and the lens loses its flexibility. In the normal human eye the lens is too flexible so that it focus on the distant objects and nearby objects very easily. But in the case of presbyphia it loses its flexibility and the image formed behind the retina so that a person gets a blurred image. The main symptoms of presbyphia may include tired eyes, head edges and blurred near vision. People often notice the first symptom of presbyphia when they need to hold reading material farther away from densels in order to focus more clearly. Presbyphia normally occurs in people over the age of 40. A doctor may prescribe reading glasses of suitable focal length to correct this vision deficiency. Some other defects of eye. One is astigmatism. In this defect of the eye, the horizontal and the vertical views of an object are not seen with the same and equal clarity. This is due to the cornea or eye lens or both are not perfectly spherical. This defect of eye is cured by using cylindrical lenses. The next is presbyphia. Generally you see the old age persons which are using a different type of spectacles which have a combination of concave lens as well as convex lens. There is some cut in between the lenses. The lower part of the lens is convex lens, the upper part is concave lens. So, what is this defect? Why they are using such type of spectacles? This is the defect that is known as to be presbyphia. It is the defect of eye due to which the eye cannot see the nearby objects as well as far off objects clearly. It is due to the weakening of ciliary muscles as the age grows. So, they are using bifocal lenses that is a combination of concave as well as convex lens. The next is cataract. Cataract is a defect due to the aging of a person the eye becomes progressively cloudy causes in blurred vision is called cataract. It is due to growth of membrane over the eye lens. It can be corrected by using surgical medical facility which removes the extra growth of membrane. Color blindness. Cones with the primary colors red, blue and green are present in the retina. If some cones are absent or may be defected, the distinction of colors is not possible in such case. The person is said to be color blind. It is due to the absence of cone cells in the retina and it is genetic disorder. 
till now there is no any treatment in our medical science for the color blindness. The founder of atomic theory Sir John Dalton was a color blind person. Next is night blindness. Some persons have the difficulty to see the objects in dim light during night. This defect of eye is called night blindness. This is due to the lack of vitamin A in food and improper functioning of road cells. It can be cured by taking a diet rich in vitamin A. The road cells in our retina responds for the intensity of light. They work for dim light and bright light. If the light is very dim and road cells are not working properly, a person is not able to see at night. This is the night blindness. Let us discuss how the refraction take place by a prism. This is the triangular face of a equiangular prism A B C. Angle A is called angle of prism or apex angle. A ray of light P Q incident on one face of the prism. N Q is the normal and angle I be the angle of incidence on that face. According to the laws of refraction, when a ray of light P Q enters from air into glass that is rarer medium to denser medium, it bent towards the normal like that. So, this angle be the angle of refraction say R 1. Again we draw the normal on the face A C. Say it is M S. The ray Q S is incident at an angle R 2. Now, the ray Q S enters in rarer medium from the denser medium from glass to air. So, according to the refraction it again bends away from the normal and emerges like S T. S T is the emergent ray which makes an angle of emergence E from the normal. Here the original ray is P Q produce forward like that and the final emergent ray produce in the back like that. The angle between the original ray and the emergent ray is delta. This angle delta is called angle of deviation that is our incident ray deviated by an angle delta as it passes through a prism. In case of minimum deviation we say that angle of incidence plus angle of emergence equals to angle of prism plus minimum deviation angle. This is the refraction through a prism. Now, on the basis of refraction through a prism, we also explain the prismatic action of lenses.
here you observe that any incident ray bends towards the broader end or the base of the prism that is first we case convex lens it is assumed to be a combination of small prisms like that so any ray which is coming towards the prism they bend towards the base so for this prism the base is this one it bends like that for this prism the base is this one it bends like that for this prism the broader end of the base is this so it bends like that that is a convex lens always converges the rays of light now we take another case for concave lens this is a concave lens we divide it in a prism these are the rays incident on the concave lens so for this prism this is the base the ray bent towards the base for this prism this be the base the ray bent towards the base again bent towards the base that is the rays are diverging that's why always a concave lens behaves like a diverging lens here the angle of deviation delta depends on angle of incidence i angle of prism a refractive index of the medium mu and the wavelength or the color of light used so this are the dependence of the angle of deviation through the prism in this experiment we have to show the path of ray of light as it passes through the glass prism material required a glass prism white sheet some board pins some of the all pins scale protector and a marker initially we take a sheet of white paper and fix on the board with the help of a drawing pins now place the glass prism in the middle of the paper and draw its boundary now remove the glass prism mark this point as a so this is the angle of prism this corner as b and this is c this is the base of triangular prism on face ab draw a perpendicular with the help of protector and scale say this is the normal 
n now draw a ray of incident light with an angle of incidence i from the normal let the name of the ray of incident light is pq fix two all pins on the incident ray in upright position mark as s1 s2 again place your prism inside the boundary and take two all pins fix on the board so that these four pins are in the same line here the refraction take place from face ab and ac so from viewing the face ac i fix two all pins like that remember that you have to observe the base point of all pins remove this prism again remove the all pins mark these point as s3 s4 which are the images of s1 s2 and join with the scale so rt be the emergent ray after refraction through the glass prism here we start with a prism what a prism is a prism is a refracting medium having five faces the two faces of a prism are triangular in nature and the three faces are rectangular any two faces which take place in the refraction are known as to be the refracting surfaces of a prism the angle between these refracting surfaces is known as angle of prism let me discuss the dispersion of white light by a glass prism this is a glass prism white light is falling on a glass prism the light disperses into seven colors violet indigo blue green yellow orange red the splitting of white light into its seven constituent colors is called dispersion of white light these seven colors are violet indigo blue green yellow orange red this can be memorized as vibgyor this band of seven colors obtain is known as spectrum now there is a question what is the cause of dispersion it is because the light of different colored bend through different angles while passing through a prism that is the angle of deviation depends on the wavelength of the color of light here we observe that the red color is on the top and the violet color is in the bottom which indicates that the wavelength of violet color is least and the wavelength of red color is most so this is the cause of dispersion children i ask you a question which color has minimum deviation it's red yeah and which color has maximum deviation violet color exactly that is the reason we got the red color 
on the top and the violet color on the bottom. Now we discuss about the recombination of dispersed white light. Take one prism, prism 1 and another prism in the inverted position nearby the prism 1. When the white light falls on the prism 1, it get dispersed and split into seven colors remembered as Vibgyor. If this splitted light enters again into a inverted prism 2, then after recombination it emerges out from the prism 2 in the form of a white light. Thus, recombination of seven colors of the dispersed white light to get white light is called the recombination of dispersed white light. The recombination of white light was given by Sir Isaac Newton. Let us discuss some phenomena which we observe in our daily life due to the refraction of atmosphere. Initially, we discuss about the rainbow. Generally, you observe the rainbow. Rainbow is a natural spectrum of sunlight. Rainbow is formed due to the dispersion of sunlight by water droplets hang in the atmosphere after rainfall. This phenomena is due to the combination of refraction of sunlight by spherical water drops which acts as a small tiny prisms and internal reflection occurs. So, the phenomena occurs in the formation of rainbow is first refraction. Here generally a refraction take place. The second is dispersion. Here the dispersion take place at that point. The next is total internal reflection here and finally again the refraction here so that the rainbow is formed. You observe the rainbow, the red color appears at the top of the rainbow and the violet colors appears at the bottom of the rainbow. A rainbow is always formed in the opposite direction of the sun. Sometimes you get two rainbows, they are called primary and the secondary rainbows. I have a question for you. Do you know why the rainbow is always curved in shape? Why not it be a straight line and why not the curve is in opposite direction or be inverted? Let me give you the answer. Rainbow formation is due to the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is a spherical layers of different densities of air. So, that the small water droplets hang in a particular layer in which the density of droplets and the density of air resembles to each other and they are curve in shape. That is why the rainbow always curve. Next is twinkling of stars. Why the stars appears to be twinkling in the sky at night? This is due to the refraction of light coming from the star by atmosphere. As we know that our atmosphere is not having a uniform density. As we go up from the earth surface, the density of atmosphere goes on gradually decreasing. So, the lower layers that is in contact to the earth or nearby to the earth are considered as to be the denser layers and the upper layers of the atmosphere are considered as to be the rarer layers. The light coming from the stars entering into earth atmosphere undergoes continuous refraction as it reaches to the earth surface. The atmospheric refraction is due to the gradually change in the refractive index of atmosphere because due to the refraction of light, the light rays bends towards the normal. So, that 
the apparent position of the star is slightly different from the actual position. Here we can conclude that the star appear to slightly high in the sky, but this apparent position of the star is not stationary in the sky. It keeps on changing since the physical conditions or of atmosphere is not stationary as the path of rays of light coming from star is changing so that the apparent position of the star is changing continuously and thus the stars are appear to be twinkling in the night sky. Children, do you know why the planets do not appear to be twinkling at the night sky? No idea ma'am. Okay, let me explain. Because of the planets are being of large size as compared to the stars and at a smaller distance as compared to the stars and the planet considered to be a collection of tiny light sources thus the twinkling effect of all the light sources nullify each other and planets appears to be stable and not appears to be twinkling in the sky advanced sunrise and delayed sunset. As you see the sunrise or sunset actually the sun rise after 2 minutes and the sun set before 2 minutes that is the duration of day will increase by 4 minute. Why this happen? This is because of refraction of light through atmosphere. The sun is visible to us about 2 minutes earlier than the actual sunrise and about 2 minutes after the actual sunset. The rays coming from the sun due to the refraction bends towards the normal slightly and in the line of sight they appears is sun exactly this is not actual sun this is the image of sun this happened before 2 minutes so that in the case of morning we observe the sun 2 minutes earlier in the case of evening we observe the sun after 2 minutes that is the duration will increase by 4 minute. This bend the light rays and the image of the sun. Children, do you know what is mean by scattering of light? Ma'am, it is a change in the direction of the light by the molecules present in the air. Can you tell me which type of molecules? Water droplets or smoke? Yeah, they are water droplets, maybe smoke, maybe some dust particles any other type of particles which are suspended in the earth's atmosphere. Exactly the color of the scattered light depends on the size of particle. The color which we observe by the scattering it depends on the size of particle from which the scattering take place. The very fine particles scatter mainly blue color light that is the lower wavelengths. The large particles scatter light of slightly longer wavelengths such as red and more large particles scatter the light which may appear white. Children can you tell me why the sky appears to be blue? Why the color of sun or the surroundings appears to be red at the time of sunrise and sunset and why the clouds appears to be white. This is only due to the scattering of light. The wavelength of blue color light is less than the red and the other colors. These are scattered by very tiny particles and the scattering is more 
thus the sky appears to be blue. From the other planets such as moon, there is no atmosphere, so no scattering take place, the sky colors appears to be black. In the case of sky or the surrounding of the sky nearby sun appears to be red at the time of sunrise and sunset. The scattering take place by tiny particles and all the blue color and nearby color scatter and the red color to be only nearby the sun and in the surrounding sky. So, that the sun and the surrounding sky appears to be red in color. In the next case for the colors of cloud to be appear white because of the very large particles of the cloud the light is scattered and by the very large particles the light appears to be white thus the colors of the cloud appears to be white. Tyndall effect it is the phenomena of scattering of light by different types of colloidal particles which are hanged in our atmosphere. The color of scatter light depends on the size of the scattering particles. For example, if we are in a dense forest, what you observe? You observe the small small images or the sunlight here and there. This is due to the Tyndall effect. The mist particles here acts as the colloidal particles dispersed in air and the light scatters by these colloidal particles and we get this type of images or the light of sun this is known as to be the Tyndall effect.